How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week six, and thankfully we are on a buy. Uh, if you guys remember from the last episode, this one is going to be pretty chaotic in the top 25, and thankfully we are not playing. Uh, just looking at the top 10, most of them play a game against a ranked opponent. Michigan plays number 19, Wisconsin. Number two, Texas, and number eight, Oklahoma will play. We have number four, Notre Dame, and number 14, Syracuse. Uh, there's number six, Clemson, and 21, Georgia Tech. Number seven, Ohio State, and 22, Purdue. Number 10, Georgia, and 17, Tennessee. Number 11, Florida, number 14, LSU play. So it's just absolutely bonkers. The amount of teams facing off in the top 25 this week. Wow, we just get to sit on a bye. Uh, we are one of just a couple teams here getting to do it. And it could not be more perfectly timed as we are sitting at 4-1 on the season at this point. We have one loss again, but it's to the number two team. No, to the number three team in Auburn. So they are doing pretty well. They just beat a ranked team. They have a bye as well. And at this point, I guess we're just kind of rooting for Auburn to win out. We're not hoping to be in the top, you know, spot. We're just trying to make it to the uh, playoffs. So somewhere in the top 10. And a conference win would probably be enough to do that. Now, for this bye week, uh, we have one person ready to schedule. So we'll get uh, Tymon Brooks, the 80 overall wide receiver, who we are quite a ways behind uh, Wake Forest on. We'll try to get him set up for a visit. And we're actually going to send him next week against Michigan. Hopefully, we don't get locked out this week. But we are uh, a fair bit behind Wake Forest at the moment. So 1,500 points, trying not to get locked out. Um, and while I'm thinking about it, let's just give him the scholarship offer. Try to get as many points this week as possible to try and eliminate that deficit because an 80 overall wide receiver would certainly be useful for the team. Outside of that, really all that we're looking at is scouting players. Uh, just kind of went and tried to find some low lock guys. So we're going to see if we can find a, a late season addition to the board and a gem. And again, for this season, we are going 70 overall and higher. If you're not over 70, it's really not worth our time. Working well so far with the outside linebacker and the defensive tackle. How about this one? Robinson goes up to a 71. Anybody that we can add to our board that looks pretty solid is more than fine with me. Uh, five guys remaining to be scouting. Caden Crawley, the wide receiver, should be pretty quick. 93 speed, 91 acceleration, 75 overall. <laughs> In a normal recruiting class, that's pretty good with fangs. It's all right, but still pretty good. We would not mind that. A uh, couple of uh, athletes here. 74 overall, Robert Summers looks pretty mediocre. Taji McPherson, 77, 96 speed, 89 acceleration back with a 74 break tackle. 84 spin, 84 juke. Uh, we could take that. We would definitely not mind it whatsoever. PJ Uzoma, the athlete, stays at a 76. And uh, Jonathan Westerkamp at a 73 goes up to a 74. So we don't necessarily need a lot of these uh, skill positions. But at the end of the day, if we have some extra scholarships and we can add them in and they make the team better, why would we not try to pick them up? That leaves us with 950 points for the week. So Cooper Gentry, the kicker that we've been eyeing, we can finally afford to give him some points. And then I think it's uh, Jalen Smith, the 76 overall defensive tackle. We are gaining on Oklahoma, but we will give him some points as well. And then let's actually save 50. Let's see if there's somebody that we can offer a scholarship to that... Uh, we are in the lead with maybe some some chance maybe no no chance to pick up a uh an insta commit this week we are five behind on the defensive end that is 75 overall uh so long we'll get the 50 and we'll come back to him next week when we are in the lead so that's it for our quick bye week let's go ahead and advance and oh man i'm not feeling too confident about this game against michigan but uh, with the chaos this week, I, I, really what we're hoping is that they stay ranked number one so that we can be the team to upset the number one team in the country. Ooh, Christian Grimmel, the 92 overall right guard, locks us out. So does Drew Allen and Damian Coppett. Those were all long shots to get. We might be able to unlock one of them, um, but it's going to be rough. Michigan stays alive. We move up a couple spots to number 11 in the nation, which must mean there wasn't a whole lot of chaos last week with all the ranked matchups. But we'll take a look anyways. You never know. Texas, the number two team, took their first loss on the road at Oklahoma in overtime. So the Sooners move up to five. Uh, the Longhorns move down to seven. 
Anything else? Coastal got a win there, three and one, top 10. That's pretty good for us. Georgia at number 10 lost. Ohio State at number seven lost to Purdue. And we had, oh gosh, LSU, Syracuse, Wisconsin, and Georgia Tech all losing. So honestly, a lot of chaos. Louisville drops out. I'm fine with that. Uh, it's not that often we see this many teams in the top 25 take a loss. There's some more big ones. Us against Michigan, Notre Dame, Clemson, uh, Coastal Georgia. So there's a chance for things to continue to go our way. We just have to make sure that we actually win uh, our matchup. But you never know. The question here is, can we unlock anybody? Um, we have unlocks available to us. We can open the door with Christian Grimmel. I think that could be really huge for us. We still have our visit Oklahoma use theirs. This is like that perfect timing situation. Drew Allen, we can use it. We have had our visit and the Ducks haven't, so I'm a little bit uh, slow to think to maybe do that. Uh, Damian Coppett, we don't have a visit, so it's like all over the place. What do we want to do? For sure, we're going to open the door with Christian Grimmel. I think that puts us in the perfect spot, potentially, to pick up the 92 overall guard. Uh, he's a Juco guy, but 92 overall, it doesn't matter how many years we get him. He's going to make an impact with the program. Uh, Texas has their visit this week, or, or next, a couple weeks from now. I don't even know what week it is in the season. It's like week seven or eight, so <laughs> uh, we, ha we have it a ways down the road, and hopefully we can stay within a reasonable amount. Drew Allen, oh, it's so tough. I just, uh, I'm not sure we're going to be in a good spot. Bonus points wise, though, it looks positive. Uh, 255 to Oregon's 235, so we should be able to hold on and weather the storm through their visit. And we only have one unlock left. Uh, you know, I think that it could work potentially with Damian Coppett. We don't have a visit. Uh, Illinois, Alabama, Penn State, and South Alabama all will be able to use the theirs, but we have a, we're in a good spot. We're gonna, we're gonna not pull the plug or pull the trigger on Damian Coppett, unfortunately. I just don't think it's gonna work. Number four, middle linebacker, uh, plus eight, 84 overall gem. Solid coverage. Gosh, this is so hard to look at and not go for it. And you know what? We're gonna go for it because what do we have to lose? It's an 84 overall true freshman middle linebacker. Open the door, give him the points back, and let's just try to weather the storm and hold on to the offseason. We can offer scholarships to the defensive tackle, Jalen Smith and Isaias Long. I don't actually know if that's how you say Isaias, but it might be something like that. A couple of uh, solid defensive linemen. Not going to get an insta commit, but that's not the end of the world. And with the rest of our points, let's give them to Jalen Smith, this defensive tackle. Try to get our lead as big there as possible. Lock anybody out. Nobody ready for visits, so we just have a, a rough game against Michigan coming up. We are somehow favored to win this one. Michigan is a B-plus team across the board, which should put them low 90s or high 80s. They're 4-0. They statistically look better all over on offense, but it's our defense. I think that might be swaying things. Total defense, we're number one in the country, but they're number three. <laughs> and then rush defense, we're number one in the country, and they're number four. So, I, I okay, I don't understand how it all were favored because the two things we're actually leading in uh, they are right on our tails. There could be some chance. This is not going to be an easy game. Probably the hardest game of our season unless we make it to something good in the postseason. Again, for us, a good win against UCF, Clemson, Minnesota, and Iowa. Every single one of these teams has been ranked at some point in this season, but the bad loss to Auburn definitely doesn't help us. Has Michigan played anybody? They beat an FCS team, uh, wow, 13-7. That's not very impressive. Beat Akron beat Illinois and beat Wisconsin by two touchdowns. So they, I guess, haven't really shown that they're an incredible team, uh, at least on the field. So maybe we do have a little bit of a chance, but we're going to have to play pretty well. Unfortunately for me, playing well comes and goes. 90 overall for Michigan, 91 on offense, 88 on defense. We do have the home field advantage. I think that might be the best thing going for us. And uh, you know what? We're going to have them in the all yellows the maize uniforms and we're gonna wear the all green if the game allows us to uh you know sometimes it gets a little bit wonky and it looks to be good for me so let's just try to hop into this one see what we can do today again just really solid across the board for michigan their offense everything top 50 uh passing yards the lowest at 47 and then everything else is top 25 scoring a lot of points moving the ball pretty well mostly through the or on the ground 224 uh rushing yards per game is pretty rough and then defensively is just 
everything's 12th or higher with uh four of those or three of those four stats being sixth or higher so that's really scary we're not stopping the pass very well we are stopping the run i'm curious to see what michigan's offensive game plan is again for us offensively we find who's doing well we find what unit works and we'll just try to ride them uh, and see if they can take us to victory we do have one prospect coming to visit it's the number nine wide receiver in the nation timon brooks you know, if we pass for 250 yards, it's going to be a good thing for two reasons. One, because it means we're having a successful day passing with Maurice State. And two, we'll get the recruiting goal. Obviously not the biggest deal. Our top players no longer on hot streaks, probably because of the bye week. Their top player is a 90 overall quarterback who's doing pretty solid. A 89 overall strong safety with a sack force fumble and touchdown, so absolutely obliterated a quarterback it sounds like and an 89 overall wide receiver with 173 yards ward probably a threat but he doesn't seem like he's having such a great season so far at the end of it though it's just what can we do to get off to a strong start and avoid making mistakes it's a rainy day here at ryan Earson too in the state of michigan for what is now probably one of the most important rivalries in the state directional michigan versus a non-directional michigan and this is going to be interesting we will win the coin toss and elect to receive i want to get this one started with a good tempo today and as michigan gets this one kicked off i'd like to ask you guys to hit the like button if you enjoy these videos rj rivera fielding it at about the goal line he's got some blocking and rj rivera with a lot of space cuts it back inside and gets tackled at about the 44 yard line fantastic start to this game could really set us off we know he's been able to do some work in the past couple of weeks so we might be relying on his legs once again today so we will hand it off on first down trying to string it out there's nowhere to go yellow jerseys all over the field it's going to be a loss of one on first down and on second 11 we will step back maybe throwing most likely handing this one off yeah we're just gonna hand that off rpos early in the game it's kind of dangerous for me to try to throw uh and in this game the rpos are a little bit wonky so you don't have a whole lot of time to make that decision unfortunately the run only goes for a few yards so it's quickly third and seven and we're gonna have to throw a slip screen obviously maury state not gonna be able to throw down field there's nothing doing there though maybe if that one gets away it's good but there were too many guys in the area so we'll just have to try and punt this one away from around midfield nothing doing three and out on the first drive for the offense the question is what can we do with the defense out on the field it looks like it could be a good uh punt if it gets a good bounce and it goes out of bounds inside the 10 that was a thing of beauty coffin cornering them it's gonna be michigan's quarterback trying to lead his team to the first points of the game really need the fans to make some sort of impact today as we will step back kind of expecting a pass on first and 10 man in motion could be a run though has me a little bit worried they will run it towards the edge it's up to royal and we just missed an absolute whiff it's napoleon sandcastle his first real in-game tackle but man that's brutal way over committed to containing the edge there and just got burned on that play they're gonna put a man in motion again expecting the run kind of a counter he's gonna break a tackle and get three yards out of the play so far this michigan offense coming out trying to just run some smash mouth football we're bringing a blitz whitaker there to stand it up and he would have had the tackle broken if not for his teammates vickers gets his third carry for 29 yards now and on this third and two probably expecting just another run we'll see it's a handoff out towards that edge again and we're there to get the stop a huge tackle desperately needed that one it'll be fourth and six leon logan able to go in there and break up that play so we will get the ball back we did give up uh you know 30 yards or so but at the end of it we're looking okay rj rivera just had the punt bounce off his head he's gonna field it and it's gonna be a huge uh, loss of yards because of that just right off the noggin like he lost it somehow was hoping he could have got a return but nothing doing that's gonna put the offense in a rough spot terrible field position now at the 19 to start this drive and if the offensive line can't get a good push on any of these runs you know that we're gonna struggle just need something big to break let's see looking at a mid-screen to rivera I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. Maurice Tate should be able to scramble. Be kind of open, but eh, there's no way he's making that throw on the run at this stage in the game. 
allows us to hold on to the football and now we have a third and one very manageable can we convert and keep this drive alive or is the offense really going to be struggling keeping it needing a block or well probably should just slid down but we got the first down maurice took a hit paid the price need to try and avoid that for sure for the rest of the game as we're looking to run looks like they want to bring pressure let's bring ryan rushing in motion for a little bit of blocking on the edge on this counter and there is the blockers but just nowhere for rj to go this one certainly has not worked out all that well we're gonna get a little bit crazy with it though this is called the toss qb throwback if we can be accurate bentley finds rj or maurice tate no it's dropped robertson picks it up oh if that guy's not there i think that actually would have been completed and maurice had blockers in front of him unfortunately for us just a little bit too much awareness and then the game calling that a backwards pass puts us in danger and i'm not sure we're gonna be really able to do anything on this third and 18 gotta try and pass downfield they're trying to contain why is open chris rutger catches it but he's not quite able to get away from the defender so it's fourth and three i'm gonna go for this we've already seen that their defense is solid so it's going to be hard to score and we know that our defense is solid as well so whoever can make the big plays could come out on top Maurice is going to have to keep this he's going to need to break a tackle but no just too much pressure from like the nickel back there hits him behind the line and it's a turnover on downs that's going to make it first and 10 Michigan coming out again in this formation where it looked like they were so strong running the football last drive it's going to be a counter we just overcommitted with London and Vickers gets another seven yard carry. Well, this is just suboptimal so far. Expecting a lot of runs. They do hand it off. Plenty of space. Vickers gets the first down and five yards before being brought down. They're in the hurry up. We're bringing pressure, but it's just not getting there soon enough. I'm sure they're going to have a good run here in a second as well. This one a run towards the edge. Thankfully stopped for a loss. Kind of just ran into his own lineman. And now it looks like they're going to completely change things up. No. Uh, still four wide receivers out to the left, technically. Single back quarterback. He's going to keep it and slide down after a pretty big gain for a third and two. The QB blast gets us as, man, they are just moving the ball at will at this point. Nothing that we can do. Expecting them to pass, but the quarterback we know is a threat to run. in there Smith hits him and he's able to shed the tackle and throw the ball away. Oh, that is so unfortunate to end the first quarter. We could have had them for sure kicking a field goal. Instead, now we are definitely in some trouble. But at the end of one, it's still all knotted up at zeros. And unfortunately, it looks like Michigan will take the first lead. We do come into this second quarter with the field goal team out on the field. Can't expect a whole lot from this one, but you never know. Something crazy could happen. Or he could miss it, but that is just right down the middle. I will say, it doesn't look like their kicker has the strongest leg. But it is a 3-0 lead now for the Wolverines. Not exactly what we wanted, but to only give up three yards after the failed fourth down conversion from us is not the end of the world. RJ, a very mediocre return just out past the 25. We have seen a little bit of decent throwing for Maurice Tate, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Still, we'll try to do something. RJ Rivera in motion. First and 10 outside the pocket. X is wide open, but so is RJ Rivera. If he can just get to the football, it's overthrown from Maurice Tate. I accidentally uh, went into the hurry up, but we're just going to roll with it. Hand it off to RJ up the middle. Hopefully he's not too tired from all that sprinting. And just got to run north and try to do anything. Didn't feel like I could bounce it to the edge safely. Well, this drive is quickly looking like it could be over in a real hurry. Definite risk for the three and out. We'll step back. Maurice looking to throw over the middle, and I was thrown to X. Completely inaccurate, and apparently we are in the hurry up, but I don't know if we can go for this. You know, I just, I don't feel confident. We're going to go for it anyways. Our defense held them to a field goal last time. I think they can continue to do this, but we can't throw it to the swing screen. We're going to get rid of it. Chris Rucker catches it, but... The only thing that that is good for is just building Maurice's ability to throw here because our offense is in a lot of trouble right now. Well, we basically gave them starting field position inside the red zone for this drive. Worried about Vickers for sure. It looks like it's going to be a handoff. A counter is going to lose yards if we can get the tackle. Could have been a loss of two or three. Instead, just a loss of one. Wolverines in the hurry up we do know that they came in running the ball more than they pass and it's been obvious here this one gonna be a little bit off tackle London able to trip him up 
We have him in a quick third and seven. And the rate at which these guys are running the hurry up is honestly a little bit annoying. We're going to try to use her Smith on the edge here, expecting them to pass. They do. Pressure on the quarterback, throwing it off the back foot, and it's dropped by Mike Moore. That had pick six written all over it, but Michigan's going to survive. And with that survival, they're going to be able to kick and most likely make their second field goal of the day. Oh, that was going to be the break that we needed. But it just doesn't happen. The kick is up and just barely over the uprights as Michigan extends the lead now to six. Uh, I mean, man, field goals could be enough if our fans can't get it into drive. Oh, not really sure what to feel at this point. I, I don't know. Like, when we try to run, it's not quite enough from RJ. And when we pass, well, we have more East Tate. But RJ Rivera off to the races on the kick return. One man to beat. If there's no penalties, we don't need the offense to see the field because RJ Rivera has finally taken one to the house. 94 yards. That's going to give us a one-point lead and absolutely turn the tide in this game. Kick is up. And there it is. So... I guess special teams could win it for us as now the defense will get good field position. If we could just do a decent job here and then uh, force a three and out, you never know. We could be right back on top of this, but man, that's just how bad those field goals hurt on those drives with good field position is you've scored twice and we still have the lead. They've held our offense to 22 total yards at this point. And yet, here we are looking pretty solid, expecting this to be a run. It's going to be a counter. Plenty of space available. Vickers, of course, just going to continue to dominate. This Michigan offensive line is something else right now. I haven't seen enough from their passing game to feel too worried about it yet. So we are going to try and just bring pressure, play after play, and force them to throw it on us. This QB, Ryan Hill, he's 90 overall, but as 0 for 3 as his wide receivers haven't found any space. Expecting a run here. This is going to be handed off out towards the edge. Sandcastle slows him down enough for Logan to get the tackle and force the third down. And we are going to press the coverage. Incredibly risky as we have uh, not much going for us. Pressure trying to get there. I don't know who is that was supposed to be completed to, but the man that had all the space in the world comes down with it. And that's on me. Guy Luke, 55-yard uh, touchdown on the first pass completion for Michigan. Probably shouldn't have pressed the coverage while blitzing at the same time, but that one kind of seemed like a broken play to begin with. Uh, well, there goes our lead pretty quickly. Uh, I wouldn't mind if RJ just wanted to take another one to the house. Very fieldable at the five-yard line with the right blocks and the right cuts. You never know, but man, they got down there in a hurry, and we're going to be starting with pretty bad field position, honestly. Michigan with over five times as many yards on offense as us at this point. Trying to turn the tides here. I think the read option could be maybe an answer to some of our problems as long as Maurice uh, isn't getting injured. Tried to slide down there, but I was a little bit too late. The good news is with RJ recently, he's shown that he's got a lot of big play potential. So it could just be something like that sets things completely apart as... I had the first down, but man, I just tried to bounce it to the edge and definitely didn't work that time. Uh, third and two, this is risky. Defense thinks we're running it, but it's a play action, waiting, trying to find something. Right bumper was open, but no chance to get the pass off. My goodness, our offense has nothing going for it at the moment. That makes it very quickly fourth and 12, and we need the cheesiest of all cheesy punts here to have some sort of good field position. If this one can skip past the return man, RJ Rivera could down it inside the 20, bouncing down, waiting, just try, whoa, it bounced backwards somehow, but we got him down to the 11. Uh, who knows, if the defense can't get a stop though, it's all for nothing. Four wide with a tight end in the formation today, or on this play. <laughs> today, I guess, technically makes some sense as that's a man wide open. Sandcastle gets the tackle. It's Guy Luke, 34 yards. And just like that, well, now we can't even stop the pass. So things are absolutely disastrous for this defense now, as well as the offense. There's a good sack, though. Coverage actually held up enough for a play. And we bring uh, Hill down for a loss of eight. We know the passing is going to be coming. What can we do to stop it? I could see it maybe a handoff to Vickers, but second and 18, I'm not too worried. That is a draw play. We get picked up on the block. Their blocking is actually phenomenal right now. It's almost impossible to stop. Third and seven against most teams, I would feel confident that this is a pass, but against these guys, I certainly don't have that confidence. 
And they're going deep. Please pick it off. Somebody on the defense. Just hold on to the dang football. Please. Once. I understand that that was a uh, stop to bring up a fourth down. But it is unacceptable that we can't create a turnover just with so many opportunities. This one may be a good return opportunity for RJ Rivera. But he's just going to get to the 25. Part of the problem is just that our offense is so bad that we need the defense and special teams to step up. I would like to pass it here, but we might have to scramble. Maurice Tate looking, looking. A is wide open, but he's not going to get it there. Second and 10. Tate just two of six through the air, which to be fair, I think is about as good as the Michigan quarterback, but with uh, none of the success as we try to run it, but we can't do that either. We can't run. We can't pass. Our screens aren't working, but we're going to try it again. Chris Rutger, just as long as we throw this one a little bit sooner. The coverage, he only has to make one guy miss, and he's going to be short. Fourth and inches. Man, that was almost a touchdown. Oh, that was so, so close. Well, no matter what, we are going to go for this QB sneak from our own 35. It doesn't look like they're prepared for it. Maurice has the first down. Maybe we'll have a chance to get a couple more running plays off. I don't know why I keep choosing some of these plays, though, because this runoff tackle isn't going to work. The pass is probably not going to work, but we're going to try it anyways. Just feels like they're bringing pressure, and they will. And waiting for it. Y is open if we can just get it there, and it's almost picked off. Oh, my gosh. Linebackers in this game, man. That was a rare, really accurate pass from Maurice, but... Uh, I got red like a book, and it's second down, trying to step back, looking to throw. A is open. We do get it to Brian Curtis, but he steps out of bounds after picking up eight. This will give us a big third and two, and if we don't convert this, I'm going to be really surprised. We're going triple option. See how they dial up the pressure, if they can do it successfully. Getting the pitch out to RJ Rivera. Does he have the speed to make this into a huge one? Breaks a tackle, stays on his feet across the 40-yard line, and it is... Another first down for us. I just realized, though, 41 seconds left in this half. They get the ball to start the third quarter as well, so this is the time really to start moving, getting in the hurry up, snapping the ball outside the pocket. Maurice waiting, looking for anybody, and B comes up, and we, we can't get it off in time. Probably could have scrambled pretty successfully there. That's just enough of a bummer. Kind of hurts to see. Safety shifting over to the left. Jody Gentry is the guy that I'm really looking at here. And Jody Gentry's wide open over the middle of the field. Absolutely unguarded. And it's a first and goal at the three with 27 seconds left in the half. We have all of our timeouts. So I'm not too worried about this, but we are going to run it here. If we don't score, taking a timeout on the read option. Maurice Tate takes a big hit. He got a yard out of it, but I don't know if that's worth it. Well, this is touchdown or die in my eyes. 13-10. Isn't quite as good as I would hope. So we'll give it to Robertson on the fullback dive up the middle. And he's not going to get it on the first effort. So we take our second time out. You already know I am ready to slam my head against the wall, though, and try it again. Third and goal. Robertson up the middle. Can't get it that time either. He got a yard, but it's not enough. And we're going to have to just take a time out with the clock winding down here. Or maybe we go QB sneak if we can get him out of this hurry up. Tate diving over the line. He's short of the line again. He gets shoved back. There's a flag, though. Clock at zeros. It's a hold. That is so disappointing. So Michigan says no to the penalty, as they should. And it's 13-7 into the locker rooms. Uh, the fact that we didn't score there, probably a big mistake for me. Too stubborn, maybe, on trying to... Uh, you know, get the fullback dive or the QB sneak. Could have taken a timeout and thought about it there. Doesn't work out. Maurice gets shoved back after diving over the line. Down a touchdown. They get the ball. Our defense is playing pretty well. This is a toss-up still. But, I mean, we didn't expect to come in and dominate the number one team in the country. So, definitely having to make some adjustments here. But we'll see how the second quarter goes and hope for the best. If you're enjoying this video at this point, I would like to ask you to please hit the like button. Help this video get seen by more people, and it's an easy way to help to support the channel. Well, let's see what we can do on this kickoff here, huh? Clark booting it away to get the second half underway. And they're going to field it at the five, so we need something good here. And it's, of course, Napoleon 
going down and getting the hit on David Ward. Looks to me like they're coming out in the formation that they were running a bunch to start the game. So we are going to try and be prepared for that one. Looking for runs. It's a toss out to the edge. He breaks the first tackle, breaks the second, but too many jerseys in the area. It's a loss of two. Certainly not going to be confident for quite a while with the defense, but anything they can do to slow these guys down is big. Expecting the counter. I'm going to try not to overcommit in this half, and we do string him out for another loss of two. And that's going to give us a third and 15 to work with. Just have to defend that line to gain. Who knows if we can do it properly. Trying to back guys off in time. I see people open all over the place, but it's a little dump off pass. And it's going to be well short if we could get the tackle. Gave up eight yards there, but it's fourth and seven. And it'll be three and out for Michigan. The most dangerous part here is that Wolverines are going to have to kick it to RJ, who already has a kick return for a touchdown. Our only points of the game so far. So something to worry about. RJ breaks the first tackle. If he can get to the sideline, it could be big. And that was a face mask. At least it looked like it, but it's not called. So just an 11-yard return. Felt like we had a few opportunities there. He's just not quite quick enough sometimes. Maury State still warm after the first half, so we will step back looking to throw. And uh, right bumper is wide open. I don't know if I like it. B, that's probably picked off. No, Jody Gentry comes down with it. I'm not confident at all doing any of this, but it worked out that time. All right. Can we get into the end zone is the real question. Handing this one off to RJ, bouncing it to the edge. RJ makes the first man miss, has the first down, a whole lot more inside the 15. Doesn't say first and goal. Must have just got to the 11, but a huge play nonetheless. Puts him at nine carries for 51 yards, and we need to get into the end zone desperately. I, again, I don't think I settle for a field goal here. No matter what, Maurice, though, gonna lose a couple of yards on the read option. As much as I hate to admit it, the passing game almost working better than the running game all game long. So we'll go five wide looking for something. Jody Gentry, my main look, but we're gonna just throw the dump off. Try to get positive yards, give it to Stone. We got ourselves inside the 10, but it is a third and six to work with. Definitely not confident that we picked this one up yet. I do like Chris Rutger. I'm not sure, though. We'll see what the read is, what they give us. Stepping back, got to roll outside the pocket. A could be open. I don't really see much of anything. Throwing it up for A. It's Brian Curtis, and he comes down with it. A beautiful pass from Maurice Tate. A to 14 on the day. Gives him his first touchdown. Almost 100 yards through the air as well, and... That's going to give us the lead once again midway through the third. Feels good to be back in the driver's seat of this game and knowing that Michigan is going to have probably a pretty long ways to go on this drive. Ryan rushing gets down there, but it's Logan. He's able to get the tackle on David Ward. I think traditionally it uh, has been running early in these drives, so we're bringing some pressure, seeing what we can do. This one towards the edge. It's Royal there to absolutely drop him for another loss. That'll give us a second and 12 now to work with. And I'm kind of feeling past. They do step back looking to throw. Quarterback just has to get rid of it. Three of eight on the day, but he's got 97 yards and a touchdown. That now makes it third and 12. And we'll come out in the cover three, trying to do something, seeing if we can get pressure with Smith. Motion from the tight end. It's a screen. They have some blockers. It's not quite going to be enough. So fourth and three, they could go for this, but we'll expect, expect them to punt it away. Pump formation out onto the field for the Wolverines, and we'll see what we can do to try and stop this. Don't expect the fake, and it is booted away. So if we can get a good return, you never know. Special teams can change games for us. There's only eight yards, but it does give us decent field position. This is where I could catch myself in danger, though. Maury State is warm. I know he's accurate. We're looking for bombs at this point. I think that we could absolutely catch these guys off guard. Just passing it all. Chris Rutger wide open for the first down, but he missed him. Just doesn't quite work for us. And we will step back looking to throw, but kind of a bummer. Chris Rutger, it's called the motion option pass. I don't like it at all, but plenty of space for Maurice to run. And oh, he got obliterated. Oh no, I was really wanting that first down. That's dangerous. Four down territory, especially with our one-point lead, but we'll give it to Derek Bentley and see what he can do on the run. Hasn't worked well for us so far today. That time pretty well as he breaks a tackle and gets us the first down. 23 runs to 15 passes at this point, but 
It does feel like the passing is more successful. And Jody Gentry is going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to throw it up for him, see what he can do with the 50-50 ball. And yeah, that was just kind of weird. I, I tried to move him a little bit, but I moved him way out of the way. And we're lucky it's not picked off. To be fair, it would have been a miracle if he caught the ball anyways. So it gives us a quick second down. We're going to run our first counter of the game. And RJ makes the first man miss, has some blocks. And that's a successful run for him. As bad as I've said the running has been, he is averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry. It just feels like they're not coming all that frequently. Uh, oh gosh, nothing coming. Just got to get rid of that one. We are about a mile behind the line of scrimmage. We had guys open, but I don't think we could have sat in there and made the throw. Keep getting ourselves into these second and 10 situations. Bad first downs, but again, number one team in the country. Can't expect much A over the middle as Chris Rucker comes down with it. He almost picked up a block from Fontenot there, and it would have been a touchdown, but we can't complain. We're into the red zone. 50% efficiency inside this red zone, and I'm looking for Jody Gentry on that out route. Wide open, comes down with it, dives into the end zone. That's going to give us now a one-score lead. Well, we're going to go for two. Try to make it two scores. feel like this is the spot. We're already up seven. We could make it up nine. Puts a lot more pressure on Michigan, so we're going to give it a shot, see what we can do as we will step back looking to pass in this situation. I don't really like it. Why over the back of the end zone? No, he stopped running, but Stone comes down with it anyways. That was a risky throw to make. I thought he was going to be running along the back of the end zone, but yeah, it worked. So Maurice Tate all of a sudden on fire. It's 22 to 13. The nine point lead gives us just that much more breathing room. And that's a beautiful bit of running from London there to stop that return. First and 10. Expecting the run. We're going to try to bring pressure here and just absolutely slaughter these guys. It's a pitch out to the edge. London needs a big dive and he doesn't get it. I expected a counter, not the pitch. So we were just out of position there. Vickers has certainly been a real piece for this offense today as that's a wide open out route. Michigan showing a little bit more complexity in the play calling so far here. We are now inside 30 seconds left in this third quarter. What can we do to slow them down? If anything, it's going to be another toss to Vickers. Logan there to slow him down. This guy does not go down on the first tackle that often, but thankfully we have backup this time. And this is going to actually be the end of the third quarter. Thought they might have had a chance to get another playoff, but they walk out with the split backs. Can't get it off in time. And into the fourth quarter, we go up 22 to 13. It's looking good. What can we do to finish the job? No running backs in the formation. All we have to do is worry about the quarterback running at this point. Plenty of time. He strip sacks and oh, an offensive lineman picks it up and gets back to the line of scrimmage. We have not seen a lot of strip sacks. It's a shame that we can't fall on that one. Avery Rawls, the one to jar the ball free as it's third and 13 and we'll see what we can do to slow these guys down. It's a slip screen. That's not going to work as Sims just pummels Vickers in the backfield. I don't know. You would think maybe they think about going for this, but fourth and 17 in their own territory. They probably punt this one away. It'll be Jody Gentry back to return this one. We know that he has some electricity when he's returning kicks. So who knows? No, they don't even want to chance it. Kicked out of bounds at about the 30. If we score on this drive, it might be over for the Wolverines. Well, I don't feel confident in this at all, but we are going to try it anyways. Uh, this is a flea flicker. Oh, run, Maurice. X could be open. B is wide open. Jo Jody Gentry turned around but couldn't get to the ball. Oh, if we had a chance to set our feet into touchdown, we just didn't quite have enough time. So second and 10, that is brutal. And I call the slip screen here, but I don't like that one bit. We're just going to hand the ball off to Derek Bentley and uh, hope for the best there know that that could work pretty well get ourselves positive yards and make it a more manageable third you know it's not often that we have a guy wide open downfield but it is often that we miss that so it's a real shame uh, what could have been as uh, right bumper is open but we can't get it off in time i don't know who that is but he burned his man by a step and a half hit is worth throwing maybe not the wisest to go for the long bomb on third down but i am not going to go for this up two scores. The last thing we need to do is gift them good field position. So we will 
punt this one back. And it's going to go inside the 10. He picked it up. He made such a weird move. I could never predict which direction he was going to go there. He made a good thing out of that return, honestly. 421 left in this game. We know it's coming. It's going to be a lot of passing, except on this first down. They <laughs> hand it off and lose a yard. That seems kind of foolish to me. I know they're a run first team, but certainly wasn't going to work out there. Avery Rawls gets the stop, and now they're inside uh, four minutes. Second 11, and they're going to have to step back and throw. We're going to try something here. Bring in pressure. This is incredibly risky. They hand it off up the middle. Sandcastle gets the stop. It's fourth and one. A huge play from the man. The Frenchman just getting it done when it matters most. Kind of expecting a run from Vickers here on this fourth down. It is going to be handed off towards the edge. And I was there with Royal, but I just over pursued again. Where the hell are my plays? Well, we were just barely able to get the playoff in time. Yeah, we got the sack. I was, I'm in the middle of try. I like scrolled to the goal line somehow. I couldn't find my right plays. But the CPU's got my back. So the negative is that they still have the ball, but the positive is that they're going backwards and... Uh, the clock is running. Second and 18. Over the middle. Caught, but tackled in bounds. And it's third and a mile still. I guess maybe if it was second and a mile, now it's third and a kilometer. Uh, still, though, looking pretty positive for us. Tight end in motion. 228 left on the clock in this game. Really just worried about, well, I don't know. They're burning the clock here. I'm worried about the out route, but they're looking at a mid-screen here. Quarterback's going to get sacked. He had nothing ex uh, at the moment. Had a guy coming free, but it's a 12-yard sack, fourth and 25. They got to go for this. The thing for them, though, is that this is uh, the punt team out. So we are in the safe zone, trying to make sure that nothing crazy happens, but... I mean, are they waving the white flag at this point is the real question. This one fielded by Gentry. Somehow has the block. Stays on his feet. Squeezes through for a couple more yards. And I'm still looking to score here. But against the number one team in the country, we're definitely going to be burning the clock while doing so. Read option to Derek Bentley. It's going to be Maurice keeping it once again. Spin move doesn't work. And man, those options have been covered really well all game long. Michigan takes their first time out as we will look to run the ball. Goodwin comes in. There's nothing doing. They brought so much pressure on that play. Lionel Goodwin loses three yards. Michigan will take their second time out. I think the problem for the Wolverines is uh, Derek Bentley has hip, a little hip bursitis. The problem is that they're down two scores. So even if they get the ball back here, it's going to be a miracle if they can stay alive in this game. Waiting over the middle. X is wide open. Jeff Fontenot, the first down. And that'll seal the deal as Michigan takes their final time out of the game. Knew that the pressure would be coming on that one. So just rolled outside the pocket. Waited for somebody to come open. And we convert, get the first down and stay alive as Avery Binkley, the free safety, just ran the football. That's interesting. Kind of... Uh, worry some about our depth but if he's an uh, athlete it makes some sense now under a minute second and seven we'll wait every second off the clock here snap the ball hand it off to bentley <coughs> i gotta <coughs> i gotta sneeze my allergies are killing me but it's third down with the clock still burning that is oh so brutal just the the pollen in oregon going crazy at the moment and we will well we're gonna pass uh this is unnecessary but if it works it would be pretty cool Stepping back, throw it to the running back. Bentley gets us a first down. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Was it necessary? No. Did I want to do it? Yes. And that's going to be the game. Could have come out and kneeled the ball, but why Why even risk anything going wrong? Although I know in, in real reality, nothing wrong can happen kneeling the ball in this game. Man, we just upset the number one team in the country. RJ Rivera is our player of the game. He's got that kick return for a touchdown and a bunch of all-purpose yards. But Maurice State surprised me. Kind of the reason that the offense was able to do anything in the second half after we struggled uh, at the end of the first half. And it's a big win, 22-13. That should catapult us into the top 10. And it'll definitely make us the team to beat in the Big Ten. So... Kudos to the Gray Boys because we are something to be feared so far this year. Man, after a really, really rough start to the game, being down a bit, uh, we figured it out. We got it going. 89 rushing yards, only 155 passing. Neither team really able to move the ball. Just kind of 
slow and methodical both sides burning the clock not picking up a lot of yards but we had enough big plays at the end of the day to come out with the victory we beat number one i'm sure there's some other upsets and that is just good news rj again player of the game 10 carries for 66 yards and a touchdown but also the return touchdown unless that's the one they're counting and all the uh kick and punt return yards avery rawls gets credited defensive player of the game he had a big sack and a forced fumble really just a shame that we couldn't come down with that i think that's our defense's biggest problems is they don't create turnovers when they have opportunities anyways it is week seven and we can go ahead and just advance on to week eight we go on the road at penn state but we will definitely be a top 10 team looking like one of the best in the nation Ooh, big recruiting battles all over the place still nobody committing to us nobody locking us out not sure how i feel about that a lot of XP for beating a top five team is nice. And we only move up three spots. Number eight after beating the number one team in the country as Penn State jumps up and is ranked. So add that to the list of ranked games for us this season. Let's see what happened. I know there was some chaos. Uh, apparently not as much as I thought. Auburn moves into the top spot. USC at number two. Stanford is there. And then Clemson was able to beat Notre Dame. Uh, so that was an upset. Number six beating number three. So we had Michigan, who is uh, in front of us somehow. Uh, a little bit disrespected there. Notre Dame falls below us. So there's two. Unfortunately, Coastal loses to Georgia pretty badly, 42-28. So that's their second of this season. They drop down to 14. Uh, Nebraska loses at 13. So a lot of ranked teams, Army included, uh, with Mississippi State, LSU, Cal, and Arizona State dropping out. But just not quite as much as we would hope. Still three undefeated teams at the top of it all. Uh, two of them in the Pac-12, so they will have to play each other, which is good news for us. The bad news is that we are ranked behind a team that we've beaten that's in our conference. So I don't even know if we'll get really another chance to uh, have a crack at them. But we just got to hope for the best, hope for more chaos. And I mean, you know, when we have one loss, sometimes that's the way the chips fall. In breaking with it, though, the media poll does have us uh, at five. So uh, we're just big fans of the media poll here. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I say it every time, but it really does help the channel grow. So I appreciate all of you that do that. And once you've done that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, as well as our community Discord and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.